Hey, back again. I'll keep it short and sweet. Ah, eyes are bugging out. I'm tying quite a bit. You guys have been following the very little that I've been putting online just because it's my busy time of year. You've probably seen this thing in a picture. Still haven't sorted all those beads out yet. Might put, put my kids to work on that one. Um, but at any rate, uh, today's video is going to be for a basic dry flat. Boy, i got to get some regular glasses, man. My eyes are shot. Tying a lot of small stuff. Um, to go in line with my newsletter, I'm doing a fly, another simple guide style fly pattern um, for caddis. I call this one the trigger caddis, and the reason why I call it the trigger caddis is it has a wing uh, made out of EP trigger point fibers. This is one of the few uh, synthetic materials that I actually like um, in dry flies because it's impregnated with a floatant, floats really, really well, sheds water, it's soft, compresses a little bit, so if you use it for winging, which is what we're going to use it on this fly, um, it's really good. What I like to do, because this material, if you never used it, and it comes in a plethora of colors now, and they run like a couple of different things. He has a tailing pack, which is just for tails, which is pretty much a long, almost like microfib, it's except it's eight inches long, so it's a lot easier to work with. You basically tie it in, pull it to length, trim the excess, you don't waste any. You can tie hundreds, if not thousands, of bugs out of it. But the uh, regular trigger point fibers are either solid colors or... They're in a variety of mixes and blends. Now, if you've ever used synthetic material, when it first comes out of the package, it's great, but then putting it back in is kind of a pain in the neck. So what I like to do with this stuff, and I have all the colors that I use most frequently here, um, I, I found, and you don't have to get all these, Hairline and all these other companies they are going to hate me, but uh, you don't need to go buying all these doodads and gadgets and whatnot. You can find these little plastic tubes. These ones are about six to six inches long, maybe seven, I forget, or maybe eight. But you can put the whole hank right in there, and that's what I do. Keeps it a little bit more orderly, and then I just take the whole pouch and put it where I got to put it. Um, then I digress. There's only a couple uh, materials in this fly. There is a little bit of CDC uh, done in a not your normal type uh, conventional way of using it. It's kind of like an underwing. Um, but it's a super simple fly. And it uses, utilizes um, hen fibers for legs as opposed to a stiff hackle. It's uh, borrowing from an idea um, from, you saw the tie or the fly that I did with Goulet's high vis caddis. Similar type of idea, borrowing a technique that Dave used. I really enjoy that because you. The use of hen, if you use the right hen feather, will give you a, uh, legs that actually move and breathe in the water. So, in essence, the trigger caddis gets its trigger not from the trigger point flat, uh, material, but from those legs. So, um, I'm going to tie this one today that's basically in a color scheme that's very similar to the winged adults of some of the smaller caddis we see right now, which are your male versions or male variations of some of the winter caddis we have. So some days guys are out there fishing on the Farmington and those little foam pupas that we skitter and skate work really well. And then other days you can catch fish on winged, the winged adult patterns and those seem to work well. So this is just one that I use for that. Um, and on a side note, an alteration of color um, and size and you can cover all your bases for all your caddis adults and even some spent wing stuff which I'm probably going to show you some of that later this year. Um, probably going to be putting these up on the store soon too because this is just a great little fly. Enough of me talking. I don't really have any rants. Well, yeah, I do. Um, just for my rant happy people out there. Is it me, or does it feel like everybody's got a podcast now? Everybody's got a podcast. Everybody feels compelled to have to get in front of the camera. Granted, I am right now, but I'm going to be showing you a video to document every single thing they do. Hey, I'm on the river right now. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Whatever, man. Just go go have fun. Who cares? Save that for the film tour. It's done enough damage as it has. Enough of the rant. Rant over. Let's tie. 
All right, so I got an Arex number 16 freshwater 501 dry fly hook in the vise. It's a barbless uh, dry fly hook. I really like this. We're going to start out with a Vivas 8 aught, as you see here. Typically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my thread roughly about the spot where I think the head of the caddis is going to start. We're using like a standard brown. I'm going to go right back to about the point where the beak of the hook is. Next thing I'm going to do, and you can use a lot of different kinds of caddis dubbing on these. You can blend them by hand. For this particular one, this is a, uh, and I really like the um, Jack Mikovich, uh poly caddis, which is what I'm using. This is in like a blackish brown. So if you don't have that, you could mix a little bit of black and brown together. It's got Antron in it. Um, the one thing I will say is if you look at a real caddis adult, they're a very short bulbous body. And the wing is typically, you know, at least another third longer than the body. Or, and conversely, the body's about two-thirds the length of the wing. So I like to make these relatively rounded and bulbous. Because if you look at a real caddis when you flip them over in your hand, you will notice the same. And I'm going to bring that roughly to about there, which is about a, you know, eyes width back. Now we're going to take two CDC feathers together. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull all the fibers from one side. Transfer them to your hand. Like you see here, I trim off the butt ends. I'm just going to fix them right there. That's going to be my little underwing. Don't worry about it if it's a little too long. Next thing we're going to do, and I already put my color back. Oh, no, it's right here. We're going to use a dark caddis gray trigger point. And if you look at this stuff, when you pull it out, it's got multiple colors in it. It's not just one color. It's like some browns or some grays. So the nice thing with this material is it's really soft. So even if you overdress it, you're not going to ruin anything. So I cut that right off the hank. What I'm typically going to do with this, because it's caddis or tent wing, I'm going to tie part of it on the near side. And I'm going to leave roughly a little bit more than what I think the wing is going to be facing forward. So one loose pinch wrap, two. Come almost to that point where the hook eye is. Work my way back, like so. And then I'm going to fold that section over, like you see here. It's going to give me a little bit of a bulbous head. And I'm just going to wrap my thread right over it. Once I've done that, I'm going to half hitch this. Now the next thing I'm going to do in order to cut this, because if you look at the back end of a caddis wing, if you are to tip them, it's kind of like an inverted they kind of shaped like this to a degree. So what I like to do is I take my scissors when I go to cut this. And if you've got a longer pair, it really helps. You come in on an angle. Remember, your body, which is right here, is roughly two-thirds the length of the wing. If you notice, I cut this right on an angle. One shot. So it's going to give me more or less like a little V-wing. If I got a little piece of extra in there, it's fine. What I have left, I can put aside for my next fly. Just trim that little excess off. So I got a nice little underbody, as you can see there. You could probably fish this fly just the way it is. But what I like to do, like I said before, is I like to use some hen feather, a couple turns for a wing, I trim it top and bottom. The, now that I'm very particular on these, and these are getting harder and harder to come by, but Whiting Farms makes these um, uh, Hebert Minor wet fly hackle um, hen capes. This is a medium brown dun. It's these green label deals. If you find these, uh, get them. You can tie hundreds and hundreds of flies out of these. This one's pretty pick clean, but I like this color for this particular fly because it matches it very, very well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring those fibers rearward. What you can do too if you really want to, actually ideally what I do is I'll tie this in in reverse. 
because I want this to stay. You can either tie it in by the tip. What I like to do is I come down here at the base for this particular fly. And I trim that away like so. By leaving those little bits of fiber on there, it's going to catch it with the thread. So I tie it in on the near side, just pin it with your finger. A couple turns, go right back down into here. Come back up. And then the last little thing, and this is just a little added, you don't even need to do it, you can just leave this thread underneath. But I'm going to use, and this is an own personal blend, this isn't one you buy itself, but it's just a little bit of brown squirrel, a hair of flash in there. Very, very little. And you can see I've dubbed it very, very thin, very sparse. And I'm just going to take that, just to kind of cover that up a little bit. And don't be afraid, you'll see because of what ends up happening right there. I'm just going to take some of that off. It has a tendency to slide because you're going to have a little bit of a bump there from that fold it over trigger point. Half hitch it. And then I like to use my hackle pliers just because it's a little easier for me to manipulate. But I'll grab that feather right by the end. And I'm just going to take one. Break it off. It's been a long day tying. Drank a little too much coffee today too. So I'll take one turn. Full turn. And then part of a second. And I'll tie that off. One turn, two turns. I'll take my thumb now, if I have to. One in front. Half hitch it. What you can do with your thumbnail too is if, if you have a tendency to crowd the eye, you can take your thumbnail and just move that thread right there with your finger now. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do, if you're going to use any head cement, you can put a little bit on the thread. I'm going to tie this without it and just do my whip finish. Build a nice little thread head. Got really poor lighting right now, just so it's not flashing back at you. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go in there and I'm going to trim off right across the top just like so. Trim off on the underside. So that there's just a few fibers in there. Peeling off to either side. Now because you used hen on that, and a lot of people are like, oh you used hen on a dry fly, oh that's not, yeah, it's not kosher, you can't do that. Baloney. The reason I have that on there is everything else in this fly is going to help float it. Those are just a little bit of extra movement. Coming out of front. And if you look at that from the bottom, it's got the same kind of silhouette as a caddis. That's it. I'll tie some other colors of these. Look for them in the shop at some point too, but that's what I call the trigger caddis. Hope you enjoyed it. It's a quick one. Happy tying. And oh, by the way, these do work now. I like them in like an 18 and a 20. 16 is on the top end, which you see here, but one a little bit bigger so you can see it. That's it. And if you got like an unruly fiber on there, just trim her out. And that's the fly. Have a good one. Happy tying.